Thank you, councillors, and welcome to our council meeting this evening. First of all, may I extend a warm welcome to the members of the public in attendance and those watching our webcast. I would like to remind all members to speak clearly into, the mic into their microphones for the benefit of those watching at home. Members are asked to consider whether you have any disposable pecuniary and uh, or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting, and if so, to declare it and state the nature of such interest. <coughs> I will remind members that Section 106 of the Local <coughs> Government Finance Act 1992 applies to this meeting, so that if a member present is two months or more in arrears with their council tax, they must declare that to the meeting and must not vote on any budget or council tax item. Any member who fails to comply with that requirement will be committing a criminal offence. Can I now ask members to make their declarations and remind you that you should state the item number and title and the nature of the interest in question. Okay, uh, Councillor Bill Chris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm the Governor of Southall High School in Millfield Church in England Primary School East. <coughs> Councillor Green. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of interest is a number of the amendments talk about social housing. Uh, 
the world prize ship. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dolberry. Thank you for my partners as school governor. Okay. Um, Councillor Pat Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, school governor of Christchurch Primary Recognition. Um, all right. Uh, Councillor. Thank you, sir. I'm a good man. So I've been to high school and it tends to be high school. <laughs>
few sort of um, mirror announcements. Um, we are a mass and I were, um, were fortunate to be able to attend the Peace Proms at the MS Bank Arena on the 18th of January. We had a wonderful afternoon and the Liverpool Choir of ch school children were out of this world. We were especially proud to be present at this event as 14 world primary schools were represented. The children were fabulous and I, 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 sent, I sent a letter of congratulations to all the schools. We are aware that it takes an enormous amount of time, commitment and enthusiasm to produce such excellent performances. On the 27th of January, the Mayoress and myself planted a tree in Birkenhead Park to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And in the evening, we attended the lighting of 75 memorial lanterns at Port Sunlight. <coughs> On the 29th of January, in the afternoon, we attended the world commemoration of the Holocaust Memorial Day at the Floral Pavilion with young people from both our primary and secondary schools. Our schools continue to promote eco-friendly environments. Our children are passionate about saving our planet. We celebrated the raising of another eco-flag at Gaten Primary School last week. We celebrated the work of some of our volunteers who did thank sorry, we also celebrated the work of some of our volunteers with a thank you, the thank you events in the parlour for Hezbollah, Terophilus, and the volunteers who serve on the school's appeal panel. On Friday, we were at Highgate Station uh, in the wind and the rain to meet the voluntary group who give up an amazing amount of time to work on the station gardens which they won a third award this year for best kept station. So congratulations to all of those. We've also attended many events and as always are amazed and humbled by the work of our wonderful volunteers. Thank you for listening to that. Right, if we move on now to, um, just wanted to say that um, I will be attending, <coughs> adhering, sorry, strictly to the time limit during this meeting. Please do not ask for more time as we'll have to refuse you. Can I also remind members that they are free to leave the chamber and take a comfort break when they wish, although they should aim to be present for any votes. <coughs> now turning to item 3. We are asked to approve the minutes of the council meeting held on the 9th of December 2019 and the extraordinary council meeting held on the 13th of January 2020 contained within pages 1 to 16 of the agenda act. I will move, I will move the approval of these minutes as a correct record. Do I have a second there? Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. If there is no objection, can we agree the minutes by assent? Agree. Thank you. Um, Agreed.
The petitioners are asking for more parking spaces because it's now becoming dangerous for both pedestrians and drivers with the way the cars are being parked. And we ask the council to look at ways to meet their needs for safety and parking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a petition on behalf of uh, parents from Finnwood Primary School uh, who have got concerns about children's road safety issues and they'd like the council to look at the reducing speed limits and also put some safety barriers in front of the school to stop children running out, going out onto the road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are asked to note the content of the Council's budget and policy framework procedure rules and standing orders contained at Part 4C of the Constitution. Are we agreed that they can be noted? Right, for the purposes of the budget debate, members are asked to suspend A. Standing Orders 12.1 insofar as it relates to amendments, B, Standing Order 12.9, and C, Standing Order 12.10. Is that agreed? Councillors, it is my intention to run one single debate on the motions together with all of the amendments then take separate votes at the end of discussions, as it was on each amendment, as it was voted separately. I refer members to pages 29 to 44 of the summons and pages 1 to 10 of the supplementary agenda pack. I now call on Councillor Pat Hackett to formally move to the Cabinet's budget resolution as <laughs> set out in the summons. Councillor Hackett. So moved, I call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to second. second Thank you. We have submissions in respect to the budget from the Conservative and Liberal Democrat groups, which are detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. I now invite Councillor Ian Lewis to formally move his budget objection as detailed on page 11 of the supplementary agenda pack. So Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I call the Council of Leslie Ray to second. Thank you. I now invite Council Phil Gilchrist to formally propose the budget amendments as detailed on pages 13 to 18 of the supplementary agenda pack. So Mr. Mayor. I call on Council Chris Carubia to second. So second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. The Council will now debate the Cabinet's budget resolution and the budget objection and the budget amendment together. I remind members that at the end of the debate, a series of recorded votes will be required. By right, Council Hackett, you now have 15 minutes to speak to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before I start, can I say, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may first of all set out the context in which this budget is presented and a bit of the background about the difficulties we are facing. Mr. Mayor, setting a legal budget which is balanced and still allows rural council to provide the vital services our residents rely upon has been more and more difficult, of course, every year since austerity began 10 years ago. The last decade, Mr Mayor, has seen this authority stripped of more than £233 million. Pounds. That has a reduction in our spending power of more than a third, and it's primarily because the amount of funding from central governments has been cut by 52%. Mr Mayor, we haven't given the task, hoping in the coming year we get another £32 million pounds taken out of our budget. And this is at a time when demand, of course, in key services such as social care um, 
is soaring, facing greater pressure, of course, on frontline services every day. In contrast, Mr. Mayor, we see Hampshire Council in the, in the leafy south is set to receive a budget increase of £35.3 million, or 14.23 uh, rise in its budget. Very fair indeed, Mr. Mayor. This comes, of course, as I said, after a decade of cuts. Um, the environment we're in now, which has, as I've said, decimated local councils in the local services they provide. Most notably, Mr. Mayor, the Act has fallen on councils in the north and the most deprived areas of England. This is only set to escalate as the government's new funding formula um, significantly downgrades the importance of deprivation in its calculations which particularly affects us with the number of the most deprived wards in the country, of course, in our borough, three and of course, are Lisa, Bidston, um, and Lisa, Bidston, and uh, and But it doesn't get away from the fact, it doesn't get away from the fact that this government is ignoring, uh, is ignoring in our borough. Mr Mayor, this round of budget uh, changes has yet to go ahead, so the government has the opportunity, of course, to stop them. However, if it doesn't, then it's breaking two major promises that it made, bringing an end to austerity and levelling up in the country. The fair funding review, Mr Mayor, will affect how funding is allocated and redistributed uh, between local authorities from 2020. Uh, it risks leaving more sick and vulnerable people without the care they need, particularly areas, you say, that voted Conservative for the first time at the last local election, sorry, the last general election, you say. Mr Mayor, a decade of cuts, Conservative cuts, and, and inaction has pushed the crisis, of course, in social care to breaking point. Despite the Prime Minister's claim last year to have a plan to fix the crisis, any questions about the details of this elusive scheme are met with silence. Instead of the plans we were promised, councils are now bracing themselves for even more cuts to social care funding as part of the ironically named Fair Funding Review. Mr Mayor, research from the LGA, the Local Governments Association, has revealed that this funding review would see hundreds of millions of pounds of social care funding cut from local authorities like Wirral and channeled towards the Tory Shire counties, county councils including Surrey and Buckinghamshire. The vast majority of the so-called Red Wall, of course, as well, will be hit hardest by this change, an area that represents 70% of Conservative gains in the, in the 2019 general election. Mr Mayor, this review will also see 300 million of funding fall from less affluent Labour councils to areas that are considered to control. I know that despite having one hand tied behind our backs, we will continue to innovate, make world safer, protect and support the most vulnerable in our society. But of course, Mr Mayor, these cuts will, not, will have consequences. We can't get away from that. Even worse than the politically partisan way in which these cuts will be made is the effect on levels of inequality. The 10 most deprived local authorities in England will face 13% on average cuts, while the wealthiest will see their budgets grow on average by 13%. Funding for social care for older <coughs> people is due to drop in the northwest, but the southeast and the southwest will see an increase. Is that fair, Mr Mayor? Mr Mayor, these changes flow from a new formula that will dramatically reduce the importance, as I said, of deprivation of calculating allocations. As a council, we have dug deep and we've been radically changing the way we work and we will continue as we have to to go further to balance our books. Mr Mayor, as I speak, the council's reserves are at the lowest for a decade and we've been forced to rely on them to bridge the gaps in our funding. An option, of course, Mr Mayor, we can no longer rely upon. But we've had to do this because by the government's own reckoning, Wirral is rated one of the most deprived councils based on an analysis of 
income levels, employment, education, health, crime, and barriers to housing. Yet, as I've said, it's an indicator they are totally ignoring in this fair funding review. However, despite this, uh, and we are reaching, I have to say, breaking points with our finances, with bigger cuts, as I said, on the way next year, which means we will be by then at the stage when doing so will mean we will have to consider vital services that people rely upon. As I said, we have worked hard under enormous pressure to keep our libraries and children's centres open because they affect the life chances, of course, of people in the world. These new cuts next year mean putting them at risk. But Mr Mayor, of course, we are moving into a new committee system in the next municipal year with responsibility, decision making and hard choices shared in a new proportionate system across the parties, with all parties having to make those unpopular decisions. And I ask all parties to join us in appealing to the Conservative government to stop this before it's too late. Particularly the Conservative Party opposite, to put aside tribal loyalties, rise above party political point scoring, and join with us and the other parties to lobby governments get the best financial deal for will. That's what residents want, and surely it's what everybody else here wants. Council Lewis, I know he was an honourable man, and I know he's told us he's not an apologist in the past, but his own governments, if he thinks they've got it wrong, he's told us that many times in this chamber. And surely he will admit they've got it wrong with this funding formula for the will. Can he rise to the challenge? We shall see. Mr Mayor, with this budget we have responsibility to our residents to rely on the services this council provides. And despite the mentioned central government funding, we are working hard, as I said, to bring about <coughs> the regeneration desperately needed. From New Ferry to Liscard, Morton, Bromre, and of course the huge regeneration proposals for Birkenhead, which will also include huge social housing. Yet Councillor Lewis tells us in his amendment that there are no new proposals to invest in new council housing. Well, one of the options we are looking at is, of course, and has been council housing. But in the meantime, as we speak, we are already building 1,000 new homes, including affordable homes at World Waters, the biggest brownfield site in the North West. And it's great to see uh, regeneration really moving at a pace in this borough, Mr Mayor. But well, sadly, it's also astoundingly hypocritical coming from the representative, I have to say, of a party that has presided over the most severe housing crisis in decades. Beginning with Thatcher's bonfire of council house building through the right to buy and ending with a record increase in the number of homeless people under the Cameron, May and Johnson regimes. The Tories have blocked councils and social housing providers from building houses that can generally meet the needs of the manager. <coughs> Mr Mayor, how the representative of a party that has cut and capped housing benefits, introduced the bedroom tax and taken away billions in funds from projects to develop, develop affordable housing schemes, can have cheek to criticise Labour is mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah. Mr Mayor, we now have the model to drive our huge regeneration programme, as most members know, and we have been and have been supported with and I thank them for that. And one of the options is of course council housing and opening up the housing revenue accounts. This will be discussed and presented to party leaders and wider members' workshops. So I say stop scaremongering and petty political point scoring council leaders and get on board. <laughs> In terms of the Tory objection regarding uh, the cost of Chief Officers team and Senior Directors, which they say are an excessive burden on the taxpayer of over £2 million, can I, can I say, uh, as Councillor Lewis knows, this is coming to the ENA tomorrow with a restructure demonstrating a saving of potentially 3 to 8k.
So please again stop scaring him, Councillor Lewis. Mr Mayor, while we're on the point of funding and money, we will recall as well the fact that the last Tory administration uh, they left us with a £17 million pound yes. overspend that yes. we inherited. So we don't need, I would suggest, lessons from the Conservatives in terms of the money. Um, Mr Mayor, it's a budget that has no major cuts, no major service cuts, no compulsory redundancies, and is reducing council tax on 9,000 of the poorest in our borough. The only council I do believe in the North West to do so, and we should be proud of that. And I thank Councillor Williamson and the officers for the work they have done on this. It's a budget, Mr Mayor, that's also backing up our green credentials following our emergency climate declaration last summer. The motion we put forward here you will report last July. With a focus on reducing the carbon impact of regeneration and development with a range of environmental initiatives, such as energy efficient buildings by investing from the capital program to ensure the energy efficient efficiency of the council building stock. We are driving forward green construction by recommending it to the World Growth Board, Company Board, in the construction of the Birkenhead Commercial District. And we see that also within the new developments going up at World Waters. Investments in active travel, in tandem with our climate emergency declaration, an opportunity to be more assertive in, in, in achieving a decisive shift away from car travel towards greener alternatives. Investing in forest schools, an initiative to help Mr Mayor, children from disadvantaged backgrounds to develop skills and confidence to help them achieve in a school environment. These will, these will be courses which will last for 10 weeks and will give families the confidence to build friendships and take part in outdoor activities together. Biodiversity Wildlife Corridors, the Council is planning a formal programme for 2020-2021. Leaving many verges on mode, RHS, the Royal Horticultural Society, approved wildflowers to encourage and nourish endangered pollinating insects like hoverflies, moths, butterflies and bees. So our green credentials are there. We are building on the climate change motion we put forward here last year. That's what happened in the last future. Yeah. As we look forward to a new decade, Mr Mayor, we are committed to ensuring this council is in a stable financial position to pursue our huge ambitions in regeneration and growth. Build on our council social housing vision meet our local plan deadlines to deliver on the ambitions of the climate change emergency for the borough and bring a prosperous 2020 that provides choices and opportunity for everyone. This budget will help provide that and I'm proud to recommend this budget tonight, Mr Mayor. Thank you.
now simply no more savings to be made, yet funding continues to lag behind inflation. And when the national funding formula kicks in in 2020, we're on our own. There needs to be more investment in our schools or standards will suffer. Students are working harder now than they have ever done. Certainly they are more focused than I was when I was their age. But the strain takes its toll and the social pressures they face are immense. The same is true for my staff. They work tirelessly to make sure their lessons are challenging and engaging. Their marking is effective and they willingly give up their time to support the wider life of the school. I wish I had better resources to support them, but I don't. Mr. Whiteley went on to state when I asked him for an update on this quote. Many schools and academies will see this year's increase as an opportunity to prevent themselves from falling into significant deficit. In fact, a number of schools will still have deficit budgets and balances. For years, we have seen budgets frozen and cut while inflation has been between 1% and 2.5%. We are still almost 10% worse off per pupil than we were in 2009. End quote. Mr. Mayor, I wouldn't dare to imply that the current pressures in the education sector that educators feel every single day is down to the fact that schools and educators aren't managing their budgets properly. They've been tasked with making tough financial decisions and what, what they want to do is get on with supporting the education of our young people. I welcome the Lib Dem amendments to look into the impact of these decisions on our schools across the world. When I went to school and fell behind with my reading and writing, I received extra support and caught up becoming the first person in my family to go to university. Don't the kids who are in school today deserve the same support that I got? Don't they deserve the same support that we got when we were in school? We put an absolute importance on education in this country and you best believe that students and educators feel that pressure but they cannot live up to our expectations with current levels of funding. If I had gone to school with the funding situation facing schools today, I have no doubt that I would have struggled and I would have been paying for it my entire life. The current government has given schools just enough money to keep their heads above water for another 12 to 24 months. Perhaps if no unexpected disasters come down the road, but not enough where not enough to do the work that they really want to, to be a truly profound force for good in the lives of our young people. I would urge anyone who values the transformative power of education to call on the government to take the funding of our schools seriously. The current funding, uh, pupil funding formula, is something that we have to accept. But only giving schools enough money to tread water is a complete waste of taxpayers' money and it is more tragically a waste of human potential. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
The Conservative group does not agree with the Labour Party's budget this evening. So little substance, Mr. Mayor, so few plans. It's almost as if the Labour group has run out of steam and has given up. Mr. Mayor, it's the same speech that we heard from Councillor Haggard's predecessors. It's the same request every year, the same complaints about austerity, and yet never once do they do anything about it other than send a strongly worded letter to whoever the government minister is of the day with the usual same old response. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, the comments that he's made, his speech tonight, also reflects the difficulty that is faced by the Labour Party nationally. He has said he's taken credit for the fact that he has protected services, and yet in the same <coughs> remarks he says that services are being decimated. Mr Mayor, he can't have it both ways. Labour still, after 10 years, has not resolved that conundrum. A year ago, the new leader, as he was then, said he agreed with our call to build new council houses. A year later, and not a single house has appeared on the drawing board, let alone on any road in this borough. And yet we've had the same promises tonight that we had last year, that he would look at it and he's hopeful that we'll be doing something about it. That isn't going to help the 8,810 families on the House of Waiting List in this borough. Mr Mayor, a year ago, the new leader also said that he agreed with our call for this council to become a provider, a direct provider of care homes for some of the most vulnerable young people, not only to reduce the costs and the pressures on the children's services budget, but also, as we've seen through various documentaries, to increase the quality of care for those young people. Twelve months later, yes again, nothing has been achieved. I didn't interrupt you, Councillor.